Hey, welcome back everybody. So here it is, Wednesday, May 1st, right at one o'clock. Temperature is about 76 degrees. The humidity is in the mid 60s. We had some light rain showers this morning with a few expected showers this afternoon. You so I'm not sure. the last video. I was just out here this past weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and I was able to get into a few hives that I needed to. And as you can see, most of the hives don't have bricks on top, which indicates they're queen right except these two. So I'm just gonna use some time that I have this week while I'm feeling pretty good to get into these two hives again, see if I can find the queen, mark her, get her isolated into the bottom box and go from there. So number nine, I actually added that top box, which is a shallow, maybe about a week ago. And again, the previous video, I showed you all that they already started drawing out some wax and filling it with uh, with nectar which is all good but in an effort to get medium frames onto this box I was thinking how could I do that and then I had the thought that I have a shim now I use this shim over the winter basically just to give some space between the inner cover and whatever top box so I could feed them some dry candy but I was thinking there's not much difference between shallow frames which is on number nine and medium frames and if that comes up or not, this shim will essentially allow me to add or to keep the shallow box on number nine, but replace the nine shallow frames with nine medium frames. And then I'm gonna space them out, of course. So why would I do that? Well, I plan on taking the nine shallow frames from number nine using these two separate shallow nuke boxes and adding them to either, which one is this? Number 15, I need to number this. I think this is gonna be number 17 or number 14. So I'm gonna take a look at 14 and 15 cause I haven't looked at them in a while. I just looked at, I believe this will become number 17 because I consolidated them from the green nuke box, which I'm using over here with swarm number eight. So I consolidated them this weekend, which means I got into them and they're looking great. But this hive is pretty strong, or this colony is pretty strong. And if I add a shallow box to them, I'm pretty sure they'll draw it out in a week or two. But I also don't want to take anything away from number 14 or number 15 in case they need some extra space. So that's all I'm doing today. Get into number nine and 10 again, see if I can find the queen, which again, if you didn't catch the previous video number nine is an absolute monster of a hive 10 isn't so bad i just couldn't find her so i'm going to get into those two see if i can find the queen move some frames and some boxes around with the shim move some shallow nuke five frame boxes on to two of the three nukes that i have just to give them some extra space hopefully prevent them from swarming and also give them the opportunity to draw out some frames for me. So that's it for today. Just a real quick time in the bee yard. Again, May 1st, early afternoon. Feels pretty good for now, and I shouldn't be out here too long. All right, just a first quick look. Nothing unusual. Same thing from a few days ago. This colony is just packed, but yeah, this works pretty nicely. The medium frames fit into a shallow box with a small, maybe one inch shim. And then I have the two nuke shallow boxes with the, with the frame set aside and I just have to decide which nuke box to get those put into. But I'll do that here in a little bit. I first wanna get through number nine and 10, like I said in the introduction and see if I can find the queen. And as I said in the previous video, I added queen excluders to both these hives. So as I go through this top box, if I find eggs, I know she's in here. And then on the other hand, if I don't find eggs, maybe there's a good chance she's in the bottom box. So let's get to it and hopefully we can find her. All right, just a quick update. Here I am on frame number six. And this isn't the first frame that I found eggs and it looks like a single egg in a cell, which is what you wanna see. Frame number three had a few very mature queen cells, but if I'm finding one to two day old eggs, 
in this box, that means she's in here. I just haven't found her yet, so I got a few frames to go. If I find her, I'll show that to you. I might end up going through this box again, just because they have signs they have a laying queen. All right, hive number nine continues to baffle me. So I got pretty hopeful there for a second because I found quite a few cells that had eggs and I thought they were queen right. But then I also found quite a few cells that had multiple eggs, which is a sign of a laying worker, which also kind of makes sense given the amount of drone brood, which is a sign of a laying worker in addition to cells with multiple eggs. So what I ended up doing is I, I added the shim, like I said I was going to, but I moved the queen excluder above the medium box. So the queen excluder is on top of the medium box, below the shim, and then the shallow with the shim has nine brand new medium frames, new foundation. But as you can see, this is the usual look post inspection for number nine because they're such a massive colony. And the reason I moved the queen excluder up on top of the middle box is because frame number three had or has two very mature queen cells and I marked the top bar with a small green X. So I'll check on them in a week. Maybe one of those queens will hatch, mate, return, and start laying in the next two weeks. And if that doesn't happen by about mid-May, I need to figure out how to fix this situation. And what I'm thinking is taking a queen from another colony using the JZBZ or GZBZ queen cage, which is what I did to get number one queen right, thanks to have number six. So since that worked for number one, maybe I'll do the same for number nine. But I'm going to give them about another week or two and again, keep an eye on those two queen cells, see what happens, and if not, I guess that's the plan going forward. All right, let's get into number 10, which has way fewer bees, and that's a nice thing. Let's see if we can find their queen and do all the same things, cager, marker, and then isolator to the bottom box. All right, just a quick first look before I give them some smoke. Got bees in the top box, but not many. I may have said this in the introduction, but I'll say it again. I added a queen excluder a few days ago in between the two boxes, so the idea is to make it easy to try to determine where the queen could be. So if I find eggs in the top box, she should be in the top box, and if not, I'll have to move down into the bottom box and see if I can find her. All right, well, that made it easy. No signs are of her in the top box. Let's get down into the bottom box and see if we can find her. I may have shown this in the previous video, but frame number two, this is the side of the frame that faces the inside of the hive. Yeah, they have a nice laying queen, beautiful brood pattern, a lot of very fresh day old eggs and very young larva. It's just a matter of finding her, which for some reason over the last month, or close to a month, it's been a, uh, it's just been rather difficult for some reason. But I don't know, I feel like today's the day. All right, just had her. Moving pretty slow. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. She's dark. Nice dark queen here on frame number five, I believe. I mean, she really blends in. Look how dark she is. She is a nice sized queen too, man. All right. Got her caged. Got her marked. Gonna give her about 30 seconds to dry off and then we'll get her released. All right, number 10, Queen Right, which is awesome to see. And just hanging out on top of the bar. Okay. 
she is right there taking her sweet time. Good lord. All right, down here at hive number 14, which my memory serves me right, is one of the swarms since they're in a nuke box. And I say that because I haven't made any splits this year. Give y'all a first, quick first look and it's a pretty nice full box of bees. So I'm just going through them real quick. Um, for a few reasons. One, I haven't been in them in uh, several weeks. Just trying to do something different and really just leave the swarm, well, the swarm traps that have stayed in nukes. Just try to leave them alone so they can just really get set up and that appears to be what they've been doing. And I know this probably won't come up, eh, maybe it will. But there are a ton of eggs down in a little bit of open space. Oh, in fact, there's a queen right there. So let's cage her. She was extremely easy to find with that mark. But um, yeah, she is no kidding laying almost in every cell so far and that's the very first frame so i want to go through the rest of the box if i find any swarm cells or super procedural cells i'm going to cage her and introduce her to number nine and then let number 14 make their own queen i got into uh somewhat of a rush with number 14 here forgot to show y'all <laughs> the great progress they've made I mean, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Both sides. To include the next frame, too. I mean, just look at... Look at the brood pattern this queen is producing. But yeah, that's it. They're definitely going to get an extra box because they can use the space. So yeah, 14's looking great. All right, let's get number 14's queen back where she belongs. There she goes. Let's take a quick peek into 15 for the same reasons. It's been a while. And they are one of the swarms we caught this year, which swarms tend to do pretty darn well. And that looks exactly like what they've been doing. I'll show you that here in a second. Yeah, check that out. Nice fat frames, a lot of food stores. Let's see if we can uh, be as lucky as the previous one and find the queen on the very first frame. Man, it is just amazing. Look at one, look at the band up top of the cap honey. Look at all of the eggs. Every single cell is packed with eggs. They are doing great. Check out these frames. I mean, good lord. Yeah, hey, if you're uh, watching this and you're in the Jacksonville, North Carolina area, and you're looking at getting into some bees, I got some pretty nice nukes for sale. Check this one out. This is number 15. All right, well, I'm glad I went through number 15. They are looking, yeah, 15. <laughs> they are looking great. Beautiful, beautiful brood patterns, bringing in a lot of resources and using it. I just can't find the queen to save my life today. So that's fine. They're definitely queen, right? There is absolutely no mistake about that. And I was going to add the extra box to whatever number that is, 17, I think, or 18. But with how, with how well this, this colony is doing, I'm just going to give them the extra space and just let them use it. That's amazing. Couldn't find the queen in a new colony. Doesn't happen often, but 
sometimes it does. All right, that does it for me. It's about 2.30 out here for just over an hour. I like to take my time, so again, what did I do? <laughs> Got into number nine and 10. Nine still needs help, 10's looking good, they're queen right. And then got into some of the nukes that I had in a single stack for quite a while. So number 14, they got added a box. 17 got added a box from the other day. And then 15 is the one that I just finished up in. These nuke boxes, the dimensions must be off just a little bit because what I've noticed is a lot of them, if not all of them, draw out a lot of comb on the bottom side of the frames. So they must be a little deeper than what the typical B space is. No big deal. I just kind of clean it up over time, especially if it's if it's just some wax and occasionally I have a little brood. But yeah, number 15, um, looking great as y'all saw. Beautiful frames of brood and food. I just couldn't find the queen, so it happens sometimes. This afternoon or this evening, I'm just gonna inch swarm number eight on top of the ladder right here. I'm just gonna inch them a little closer to the bee yard and I might yeah, speaking of, I'm gonna slide a few of the hives around on this end to give them some space. And since number nine has been struggling to get queen right to the point where they might actually have a laying worker, which is a first for me, um, I might slide a few of the hives over to give them some space to slide the green nuke trap right next to number nine with the idea of using number nine's bees or I'm sorry, swarm number eight's bees in the green trap or the green nuke box, geez, using them to get number nine queen right. But first, I have to, over the next few days, so maybe a project for this weekend, get swarm number eight, the green box on the hive stand, and then this weekend, get into swarm number eight, find the queen, cage her in one of the Jeezy Beezy queen cages, the method I used for the first time to get hive number one. Queen right in an effort to get hive number nine queen right. All TBD for now, but kind of just thinking out loud. I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing. So what is today? Wednesday. So today, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, by Friday night, Friday afternoon, I should be able to get swarm number eight again in the green trap on top of the hive stand with the intent of combining them, as long as they have a nice looking queen, combining them with hive number nine but yeah that's it for now again it's wednesday may 1st hey welcome back everybody so here it is saturday may 4th just after 11 a.m temperature is right below 80 degrees and the humidity is about in the mid 60s so i'm out here to do a very few specific things unlike the previous video i said i was going to get out here and conduct the full hive inspection this week but i was out here a few days ago and number nine has become my main concern so what i've decided to do today is i'm going to take a look at swarm number eight which i have marked as hive number 18 that's probably going to change here in a second and if i can find their queen i'm going to cage her get her marked and then i'm going to use one of the jay-z bz or gz bz queen cages to introduce her into number nine in addition to that considering how how well the frames in number nine are looking, meaning they're absolutely packed with food stores um, and just drawn comb. I'm going to go down here and I marked, I marked this hive right before I started recording today with a brick, number 12, and I'm gonna use some of number 12's frames that have open brood in addition to swarm number eight's frames introduce them into into hive number nine and the concept is the open brood pheromone should take care of the laying worker situation and then with number 12 they're pretty light and if i remember this right the right side as we look at it the right side of the hive has a lot of frames that the bees just aren't working for some reason so with that said between some frames from number nine and swarm number eight I'm gonna move them down here and try to get number 12 really moving in the right direction. A few things to do, but again, my main focus is to get number nine queen right. And given the amount of bees they have, which is absolutely fantastic, if I can get them queen right, and here in a matter of three weeks, once that queen starts, once the queen's 
eggs start hatching, that colony should really take off and produce some honey this year. And of course, with all that said, number 18, I might just count that not as a loss because I'm using it to get another well-established colony queen right. But yeah, swarm number eight might get uh, absorbed into hive number nine. And then the other interesting thing, speaking of swarm number eight, is I caught them over here on the tree closest to the road, moved them on top the ladder like I have throughout the season and, and last year too. And as I did that, as they got closer to the white swarm trap, I noticed a lot more bees kind of just hanging out on this trap. So my curiosity is whether or not swarm number eight here in the green nuke box, whether they reswarmed or that just might be another swarm I caught in the white and trap. One last thing, if you didn't see it in the background, I'll walk down here and show you. But I decided to, once I, once I get done with some work, right, uh, we might have some time to play in a few of the hives. Playing in them, meaning with the hive butler here, because number one, number two, and maybe a few others had some very heavy and very full supers. So I might actually be pulling honey the first week of May, which is a first for us. So with all that said, I'm gonna get the smoker lit, get into swarm number eight, hive number nine, do all the things I said, try to get number, give number 12 a boost, and then pull some honey frames. All right, let's try to get a first look into swarm number eight. So I moved them into the box pretty quickly, unlike usual. I usually leave the swarms in the swarm traps for a long period of time, but decided to move this one into the nuke box pretty quickly. All right, so with everything that I said earlier, my main focus with this swarm is really to find the queen and then use her to get number nine right. So here she is right there on the far left, if you can see her. So nice to see. Get her caged. All right, yeah, she's in there. I'll show you that in a second once a lot of the worker bees get out of there. And yeah, she's doing nice. There's a lot of eggs on this frame to include that side. That was frame number three. Let's take a look at the fourth frame real quick. That has a lot of nice drawn wax. See if she started to lay on this one. Uh, hard to tell. But yeah, nonetheless, I'm gonna do all the things I said I was gonna do and then basically use swarm number eight here to combine them with hive number nine use their queen to get number nine queen right. All right, we got her marked. So step one of a few, right? So she's marked, looking good. Now it's just a matter of getting her transferred over into the queen cage here in a second, once she dries off. And then uh, getting into number nine and 12 and number eight again, or swarm number eight, doing some swapping of frames and trying to move the best open brood frames into number nine so that can help uh, stop this laying worker situation. All right, there we go. That is swarm number eight's queen marked and caged. Now it's a matter of opening up number nine. I'm gonna get them all the way open down into the deep box, get number eight prepped, and then number 12, like I said, and just move some frames around get as many open brood frames into number nine as possible, and then install the queen as I finish things up. Before I do all these uh, really fun things with number eight and number nine, let's get down into 12 here and really just figure out what they have going on. So again, just lifting them, they feel pretty light. They have a top box here, but all right, yeah, they don't have a queen excluder. So let me just pay extra attention. 
go through the top box, which I'll show you. They don't have a lot going on, honestly. They're barely working this frame, so I might actually pull this top box and just reduce their space so they can focus on the bottom box. But yeah, let's find this queen first, isolate her, and then figure out what kind of frames I'm working with in the bottom box to try and get number nine healthy. I just went through the box twice and uh, I'm not sure how long she's been hanging out on the very first frame I pulled, but yeah, no kidding. Here she is right there. All right, she's caged, set her aside. Now it's just a matter of getting into swarm number eight, opening up number nine, which is it's gonna be a great time. And then I'm gonna pull a few frames out of this colony since I'm in here and I'll show you why I thought of this colony one by the weight they're very very light and they have some frames like that which just aren't drawn I may have checkerboarded them a while ago to entice them to draw them out or not just draw them out but to use them a little more but they just haven't so yeah I'm basically going to make a split with number number nine and pull about five frames out of here and pull five frames out of there introduce swarm number eight's queen like i've said a few times number 12 has a queen so no problem there and then uh just monitor them over the next week or two I imagine this is going to get pretty chaotic like every single time I get into number nine. I'm going to smoke them pretty heavy at the entrance, which is something I don't typically do. And then uh, I'm really just going to pop the top here. Get the top box off. There's really no need to get into that. And let's see top box and the shim really I'm just gonna get them set aside same thing with this box medium box because my interest today is really just getting down into the deep to move a few frames five frames actually just move five five good frames over from this one into number 12. Move one or two frames from swarm number eight here into number nine, since we're gonna use swarm number eight's queen. And then put everything back together and call it a day. All right, quick recap. So I ended up moving four, four frames over from number 12, which were blank frames kind of like that, or frames with not a lot of drawn comb to give them some space. Uh, this is a nice frame. I just noticed that. I'm going to move that down to 12 because that's got a lot of food stores. Figure out what to do with the rest of the frames from swarm number 8. But yeah, the bees are already starting to greet the queen. I'm going to put her wherever I can fit her. Uh, probably like right there maybe. Or actually probably the next frame. And just go from there, right? So I know for a fact that hive number 9... We'll have a queen now and i'm just going to add all the boxes back as as is with the queen excluder in between the deep and the first medium and then uh just keep an eye on number nine and number 12 over the next week or so all right final look queen is inserted candy portion is angled downward so that's it all right wishing number nine the best of luck over the next week or so hopefully they release her accept her and resolve this lane worker situation all right back down here at 12. let's get them put back together right and then a little bit of a bonus clip idea i just thought of an idea for the green swarm trap how to use them down in swarm number six which i don't remember the hive number but they are at the very beginning of the yard and they've been in a swarm trap for quite a while. I also have not looked at them in quite a while. So I'm curious to see 
just how that queen has been doing. She was a very small queen, which is fine, but the first time I got into them after capturing them, maybe a week prior, I was surprised. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to go find a frame. I was surprised that she really wasn't laying that much. So it's been quite a few weeks, probably two, three weeks. Let's see what that looks like here in a second. All right, let's get number 12's queen released. And with all of the queen pheromone that this colony has had since they, they've been queen white for quite a while, hopefully that uh, fixes the laying worker situation. They'll have an abundance of drones for for a while now but um yeah i definitely gave this hive a lot of nice drawn comb frames so as soon as those drones hatch out as long as she can make use as long as she can make use of the space here we go first look into uh Swarm number six, which I marked as hive number 16. So first time looking at them in quite a while. I'd actually have to look back on previous videos just to see the last time that I I got into this hive and yeah. They could probably uh they could probably use an upgrade on some frames. This one's seen better days to say the least. And then the uh, another thought that I had is, depending how they're looking, or actually, maybe no matter what, I can move them into the green trap. I can use some frames in, here she is. Oh, she's looking nice too. I can use some frames in one of the swim traps. There we go. So there's so queen right, nice marked queen. And in fact, if this comes up, yeah, she started to really develop a nice, a nice brood pattern. So let me get some stuff moved around here. Actually, I'll show you the next frame real quick. Just cause that looks nice, cap brood and all. Yeah, she's actually doing a pretty good job. And surprisingly, they actually don't have a lot of comb drawn on the bottom side of the frame, but yeah, nice brood. Yeah, so I'm gonna get them moved into the green box just so they can have a, an appropriate hive and then uh, stop using the swarm trap here. And this also allows me to combine some of the bees that are left over in swarm number eight here with swarm number six. Just shook a few frames that I don't plan on using, but yeah, swarm or uh, swarm number six, hive 16, I think. They're gonna get a nice boost in bee population. Swarm number six, hive number 16. Let's get her queen released. She's doing a nice job. All right, here it is, 12:30. Phase one of today is done with. As y'all saw, got into number nine used swarm number eight's queen and one frame of brood along with a few frames from number 12 and set aside the medium box since they weren't really using it so 12's queen right all good there moved a few frames from number nine down there which since they've had a queen pheromone circulating through that hive for a while that should take care of any remaining lane worker situations if i'm transferred any down there but primarily Swarm number eight's queen is now in number nine in the GZBZ queen cage. And if it's anything like number one, if you didn't catch that video, that was pretty cool. If it's anything like number one, they may have her chewed out in less than 24 hours. So since it's Saturday, I'll get into them tomorrow, maybe tomorrow afternoon. Just take a quick look at the queen cage and see if they've released her. And then the other focus is to pay attention on the ground since she's marked hopefully i don't find a dead marked queen lying on the ground meaning they killed her by balling her up or whatever they do so yeah number nine has a queen we'll see if they we'll see if they accept her hopefully they do and again that should resolve the laying worker situation all right now now let's have some fun i'm going to get into number one and number two take a look at their supers 
I got the Hive Butler here ready. If you haven't checked out their products, they are they are pretty cool. It is a cool concept. Prices are just right. Hit up Tracy. I think they're in, out of Indiana. But yeah, get with them and uh, get yourself a Hive Butler. Pretty cool product to have out in the bee yard. I got this going on. This was one of the frames from number, actually the swarm, swarm number eight, that had a decent amount of nectar in it. So I'm just gonna hang it out here and let the bees kind of rob it out over the course of the day. Because I used most of the frames from swarm number eight to, that's something I'm gonna get into later. Pop the top and see if it looks like a swarm moved in. But yeah, I used four of the frames from, geez, this is insane. From swarm number eight and the green nuke box to bait and rehang the yellow swarm trap. And no kidding, I put this up maybe less than five minutes ago. There's been a decent amount of bees flying right here, which is where I originally caught swarm number eight. And like I said in the introduction, slowly inch them towards the bee yard like I've done uh, throughout the season so far. But yeah, no kidding, within the last five minutes, they are all over this. So there's only four frames in there. That last frame that was hanging from the tree later this afternoon or maybe tomorrow, I'll add it to the yellow trap. But that is insane to see that amount of bees already on that trap. And between the white trap and the yellow trap, I mean, you're talking maybe 20 feet at the most. But yeah, that's crazy. And I see some bees bringing in pollen, so shoot. Maybe I caught another swarm, but that sounds like a whole lot to do maybe tomorrow. But yeah, like I said a few minutes ago, let's get into number one and number two. See how the supers are looking. And in fact, I might just kind of breeze through number three, number four down here, five. They all have some nice weight to them. So yeah, I'll probably just capitalize on my time today and pull as many super frames as possible. And maybe maybe have our first harvest in the first week of may which is really cool that's the first for us like i've probably said a few times now Alrighty. yeah we'll see they were looking pretty good just last week and i have no doubt anything has changed um Really curious to see uh, how many frames I'm able to pull today. Very first frame. Initially I thought, eh, okay, maybe not. That side's good to go. Let's look at frame number two. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two's good to go. I'm gonna brush that one off here in a second. Let's look at number three real quick. Man, they got that stuff sealed together. Let's look at number three. That side's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm at at least three frames. So that's 10 pounds right there. This is awesome. Check this out, everybody. This is truly amazing and a first for us. 10 frames. Granted, not all 10 frames are completely full. I'd say there's probably nine, nine full frames. Two frames that were halves, the rest looking pretty nice. So that's probably, I'd have to guess in the ballpark of maybe 25 pounds in the first week of May, which is absolutely amazing. So I have everything set up to harvest. So I'm gonna get these uncapped, spun, and in a bucket today with the intent of getting these frames back on this hive later this afternoon, and then moving down into number two and doing the same. At least pulling the frames today and harvesting them. If I can get them re-added today, that's fantastic. If not, I'll do that tomorrow morning, but if you can't tell, I'm pretty darn excited to be pulling honey about six weeks ahead of time, which six weeks is plenty of time for the bees and this colony to completely refill these frames. So I could get possibly six, 50 to 60 pounds of honey off hive number one this season. And that's one of nine hives that overwintered. So if that's two, Let's just think, if that's two medium boxes, which is about 60 pounds times nine, 
yeah, you do the math. It could be a really good season, but that's me being <laughs> that's me being very optimistic, obviously, right? But let's get them yeah, let's get them harvested and then I'll I'll show you all that of course and then we'll get into number two like I said later today and maybe number three tomorrow for the same thing. Alright, let's get started. So again, early May, first harvest. Pretty cool. I'm just gonna try to use the hive butler for everything. So as I as I uncap, whatever honey drips down in the bucket or onto the other frames. Not worried about it. This is actually, uh, this could have been a good frame for cut comb, but I'm interested in maximizing the honey harvest this year and worry about cut comb later at some point. And if you have frames, uh, foundationless frames, right, that the bees have drawn out, where it is a good cut comb frame. The only thing you have to really be aware of or just remember is you don't want to spin it too high because it'll it'll sling that, it'll sling it everywhere. Yeah, these frames came out of hive number one, which swarmed at some point. They may have swarmed twice since the new year, but no kidding, despite swarming once or maybe twice, they did a very nice job very early in the season, bringing in a lot of nectar and curing it to honey. All right, we got six frames loaded up. Let's get them going and first harvest of the year. Here it is about 2.30 in the afternoon, temperatures in the low 80s. It feels pretty nice and I don't plan on being out here too long because all I have to do is re-add the 10 frames to number one's top box and hopefully in the next month they can refill them and I can get another 20 to 25 pounds of honey just from hive number one. But as soon as I get done with that, I'm gonna get into number two see how their top box is looking and if I can't fill the entire hive butler which holds 10 frames if I can't fill them with number two I'll get into the next one which was 11 or just make my way down to number four five six seven or maybe eight and that's just going off memory that that's the best hives that I think will have honey in the top box but nonetheless few quick things to do and back into the garage to harvest some more honey. As I finish up I just wanted to show you what a few of the frames look like if you didn't see it from the harvest portion of the video but yeah no kidding the frames will go from this to perfect honeycomb in a matter of a week or so and that's what I'm really curious about is to see between today and maybe as early as next weekend, just how quickly the bees clean up these frames and start refilling them with nectar. All right, let's get into number two's top box. Let's see if they have, eh, it looks pretty good to me. I was gonna say, see if they have some frames that are ready, but yeah, no kidding. Looks about the same as number one, so. Let's pull a few and they're capped, they're capped. All right, that side not so much. That side's better, but I'm gonna leave that in there for probably another week. Let's see how the next frame's looking. Uh, that's interesting. There's a queen right there. Holy smokes. What? What's going on here? Hold on. What 
in the world? I wonder if she got trapped in the top box. Okay, well, let's hit the pause button on this idea. I'm still gonna pull this frame, but yeah, no kidding. They had a queen in the top box. What an odd start. Number two has what looks like possibly a virgin queen that was in the top box. I wonder if now, because I, I was going to say, I wonder if if one of these frames had a queen cell. I mean, I'm going to take a closer look now as I go through, but I added the queen excluder a while ago. So after I pull these frames, I might get into the bottom box see if they still have a marked queen and if they don't just add her down into the bottom box that is strange that is the last thing i thought i was going to find in the top box but yeah i'll show you this next frame and it might be it for a while but yeah this next frame is looking nice too check that out both sides same thing with the next one so I'll probably at least have close to a full box to pull just off number two. I mean, with frames like this, how can you not, how can you not be happy to be pulling these today? First week of May, unbelievable. A lot of folks have been saying this is going to be a great season and I truly believe all the hype now. This is absolutely fantastic all right eight out of ten is not bad and i decided to leave these two because the other side the side you're looking at now is mainly uncapped but i have a feeling they will be just fine in a week so since i have room for two more frames i'm just going to get into the next few hives and grab two full frames just so i can have a full box and that might be about 50 to 60 pounds of honey today all right, so this is hive number 11, which is in the third position. And I believe this was swarm number one or two that I caught this year. And something to just be aware of, I just checked, but they don't have a queen excluder in place, but it looks like I have left them alone long enough that they've really started to draw out some nice frames still working on this side but i'm just going to check a few of these and like i said if they're completely capped i'll pull them all right sure enough yeah they still have a queen and she's doing a nice job i'm just going to put everything back together because they're just not there yet they're not ready to have any frames pulled i might just let them build out over the rest of the season but they're looking pretty nice 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 new wax, storing a lot of food, and nice brood frames. All right, let's see how number four is doing. Four actually has a queen excluder on it, so I don't have to be cautious of the top box having the queen. Four was, I believe they, yeah, they were an overwintered colony, and I think they've been building up okay. Yeah, they're still working on, they're still working on bringing some honey in and curing it. So that was the first frame, right? Second frame's pretty blank. Third frame looks okay. Mm. He's still got a little work to do. And this next frame looks even better. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this one. That one looks pretty good. And if this one's nice, yeah. I'll put that previous one back. Oh yeah. Yeah, those two are pretty good. To include the next one too, so. And the next one, and the next one. <laughs> yeah, actually, I might pull a few frames. Uh, let's see. Nah, not that one. So I might sneak, I might sneak this one as well. And yeah, I'll probably take that one too. So four out of, four out of four. Four out of number four, not bad. Same old, same old with the second haul of the day, which is absolutely fantastic. So, nothing new. 
first time ever trying to squeeze uh, 12 frames into the Hive Butler, so that's kind of cool to now know I'm able to do that. The majority of these frames came from number two, eight, eight of the 12, and then ended up pulling four from Hive number four. Decided it was a nice day to pull some honey frames. Uh, the last thing I thought I was going to do is get into any of the colonies for a full inspection, but after finding a queen in hive number two's honey super, yeah, last thing I thought I was going to do is get into a hive today after I decided to pull some honey frames. So all right, she's marked, so we'll just keep an eye on this hive over the next week and see what happens. Let's get her released. And that's that. Just pop the top on number five. Let me show this to you real quick. GoPro battery's dying, so yeah, I'm gonna pull a few frames and if they're ready, they're ready. This is absolutely fantastic. All right, yeah, I'd say this is a pretty good start. Pull a few frames from hive number five and harvest them and get them re added today so they can fill them back up and maybe pull some more by the end of the month. All right, check it out. Hive number five. No kidding. A full medium this early in May. So that's another 25 to 30 pounds. Absolutely amazing. All right, just like that. Got the 10 frames from, from hive number five, harvested and about to add them back to the colony. And it is 6.30. So I had them off the, I had them off the hive for maybe an hour, hour and a half. But that was also with some dinner time. So there we go. This hive has a nice population and I'm confident they will fill that Fill those frames back up by the end of the month. All right, let's check. Uh, there's like one or two more hives. Yeah, let's check them out and see if they have some honey for us today. All right, just a quick look from this side. So that's number five, just finished with them. So we're gonna take a look at six, seven, and eight. See how their supers are looking and any frames that can be pulled since I'm out here doing it and the extractor has been well used today. All right, here we go. Number six. Yeah, they have a queen excluder. Give you all first look real quick. This side probably not so much, but they might have two, three, maybe four frames. Let's get into them and see what we can find. This is the second frame, like this one, about halfway capped. So that would probably be good in another, another two weeks. So maybe. Yeah, same thing. Maybe towards the end of May. And it looks like the next one might be in the same boat. Yeah. They're working on it. And if you can tell, all those uncapped cells are pretty full. So I think it's just a matter of another two, three weeks. But I'm just gonna say, yeah, I'm just gonna say the end of May. But yeah, they should, uh, should have a lot of nice frames. Most of the box, maybe maybe seven, eight frames by the end of the month. All right, so six wasn't looking too bad. They got a lot of stuff kind of cooking. <laughs> Check this out in number seven. Okay, now if they're building comb up into the inner cover space, I am very curious to see what this box looks like. And there is only one way to find out, especially with the amount of bees they have hanging out on top of the inner cover. This might be a full box and I might have some more work to do today. Yeah, let me show you this real quick. 
I might be pulling some more frames. Okay, let me get into them and of course I'll share what I find. All right, very first frame. That side's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. It's probably a good candidate. Let me show you this next one though. Yeah, I'd say they're, uh, I'd say I got some frames to pull. I'll show you one more and then I'm gonna start pulling some. Yep, all right. Here we go again, round. <laughs> I think this is like round four for the day. All right, this is absolutely unreal to me. So hive number seven, I believe, right? Full honey super. I think that's a shallow too, so maybe 20-ish pounds, 25 pounds, but nonetheless, I'm about to head back to the house, harvest another box for the day, and I think that'll be it. I might pop my head into number eight as I finish up, just to see what they're looking like, and so I can plan for tomorrow. But since I did nothing but harvest honey today, granted I got number nine, Queen Light, Queen Wright uh, consolidated number eight into them and then got swarm number six into a proper nuke box. I did some bee things, but today really turned out to be nothing but harvesting some honey. So I'll pop my head into number eight, like I said, just so I can have an idea what tomorrow looks like. And then, uh, probably get into some of the hives tomorrow minus number two since I found a queen up in the honey super I'm glad I had a good eye and I saw her got her marked got her released down into the bottom like y'all saw but that was strange that definitely caught me off guard Alright, so as you saw, got the super added back to number seven. I really just want to take a peek at number eight, I'm assuming. Yeah, number eight. This was another hive that overwintered. And I just want to take a peek to get an idea if I'll be out here tomorrow, or at least to start tomorrow, by pulling some frames from number eight and not with how that first one looks. Same thing with the second. Let's see. Third. Eh, not so bad. Let's see how number four is. Four looks a little better. So four, yeah. Maybe. So let's see. They have at least one. Eh, not really. One. They have probably two to three frames. Maybe four at best that are worth pulling all right as promised here it is the following day sunday may 5th right at 9 30 in the morning temperatures in the mid 70s humidity is in the low 70s and i'm out here to get into hive number eight like i showed you all last night they have about seven frames that are ready to be pulled so same process pull the frames use the hive butler extract them and the goal is to get them back into the hive within the hour and then later today uh, let's see. Yeah, later today, I might pop the top on number two and number nine. We'll pop the top, really, get into the bottom box and see what the bees have been up to in the last just shy of 24 hour period regarding the queen cage and see the progress hopefully they've made on the sugar plug and maybe they've even released her by now. So I'll do that later today after I get done messing with the honey. All right, six of the 10 frames from number eight were ready to be pulled. The two middle frames, each one half of it would be good and the other half is just uncapped. So I'm gonna move those to the middle since bees like to work from the middle on the way out. So I'm gonna get the, the six harvested and like I said, back in the hive in maybe an hour so the bees can backfill them and maybe I'll have some more honey to pull by the end of May or sometime in June. I've decided to go through all the hives very quickly uh, in an effort to find any food frames down in the deep box that are completely capped and can be harvested for a few reasons, right? One reason is to relieve some congestion down in the brood chamber. Uh, mainly the idea is to provide some more space for the queen to lay 
and I'm not gonna find that in the middle frame, so I'm really just gonna check the outer four frames. But down here, number one, found the queen on frame number three, I think. And I always like caging the queens once I find them, of course, right? So I can move a little quicker through the hive without worrying about uh, you know, rolling her, squishing her, basically killing her, right? So down here, number one, eh, it's not, yeah. Now I'm not gonna take that one, okay. So number one looks okay. They have plenty of space for the queen to continue building up the population. And she's a new queen to this colony. But yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go hive by hive and if they have a deep frame that can be harvested just to relieve some space. All right, ended up pulling one frame from number two down number two's queen, which is always nice to see. And there she goes. Yeah, number two had a fat frame. It's probably about eight pounds. So that'll give them some needed space. But yeah, I'm just gonna do the same thing throughout and that'll be the final harvest for this part of May. And All right, down here at number 11, just wanted to show you this. This was one of the swarms I caught. Number 11's in the third position. Really nice food frames, but nothing worth harvesting. So this is the hive that I got into the top box the other day. They don't have a queen excluder. So I think I found her in the, in the top box, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna get them all put back together and that's it for this one. But really nice looking, really nice looking colony. They're doing a great job using the space provided. All right, down here at number four, this is frame number eight. Pretty fat from the top, but obviously not worth taking. So I'm just gonna do a quick check as I work backwards through the hive, just pulling each frame. Yeah, nice looking brood. Quick check for any kind of queen cell. If I find the queen, fantastic. But yeah, just overall, just looking for any food frames or deep frames that I can pull like I said earlier relieve some congestion in the hives and before I start cleaning up the extraction equipment that's a heavy frame it's just not capped much but yeah that's all got a one two three just four more to go and that's it for today. All right, just a quick first look at number five I think I pulled their entire box the other day, but yeah, check out this bottom box. They got some pretty fat frames, at least that's what the top looks like, so let's see what that actually looks like by getting into the box. It's a pretty good start. <laughs> that's the inside of frame number one, which I'm not going to take. It's a foundationless frame. I don't know, that would just be a mess, but let's see what number two looks like. Eh. Number two's got a lot of comb on it, so I'm just going to check frame uh, 10, maybe nine and eight, and just go from there. All right, down here at number six, and I can already tell just by looking at the bottom box, they don't have any that's worth even checking out. So let's see, two more, maybe I'll get into number nine. I think they had some pretty fat food frames. All right, just unloaded the smoker on number seven and uh, refilled the smoker so I don't run out between seven, eight, and nine. But good lord, man, they were uh, they were not happy to see me. Probably because I recently borrowed a whole bunch of honey from them. All right, yeah, they have a, they have a few frames that look like, look like I could get into them. Mainly number two and maybe number nine. But yeah, check that out too pretty cool all right I ended up going through this box twice the outer frames that look pretty fat from the top they actually turned out to be uh, very nice brood frames and speaking of check that out so yeah I went through the box twice because I couldn't find the queen and I finally found her on frame number three there so I'm just gonna get everything put back release her and then get into number eight and nine and that's it for today 
And she's actually a 2023 queen and doing fantastic. So it's very nice to see. All right, still busy, obviously from uh, number seven. So this is number eight, same process. Just gonna pull the queen excluder. And now I can tell that's not even worth it. All right, number nine's the last one, which will probably be a doozy, but I think I remember them having at least one or two pretty nice deep frames. All right, so this will also be a good time to take a peek at the queen cage that's down in the deep box. Which that was just from yesterday. <laughs> Combining swarm number eight with number nine here. Uh, let's see. It looks like they still have the candy plug. And it looks like she's, yeah, she's still in there. I'm just gonna check out, yeah, the outer frames, and that'll be it. That would be a candidate if it was more capped, right? But since it's not, let's just put that back. Let's pull frame number nine. Nope. And let's check out number eight real quick. Eh, not so much. Okay, so that's it. I think I ended up getting three, three deep frames, one from maybe number one and two from another. All right, that does it for me, folks. So it's about 12 o'clock. I just came over here to take a peek at the swarm traps. It's got some activity. It doesn't necessarily look like a swarm. Same thing with the white box right here. It's probably just some bees. Curious to check it out. But yeah, hey, all I have to do now today is clean up the extractor same thing with the hive butler and all I do really is for the extractor remove the motor and then just set it out in the yard and the bees will find it in less than an hour no doubt and completely clean that thing up by sunset same thing with the honey tote give you one quick last departing shot of the colonies and that is it probably titled this video early May and like usual, if you like the channel, subscribe, of course, doesn't cost you anything, and we greatly appreciate it. And if you like the videos, give us a thumbs up. I haven't said this in a while, but you are always welcome to share our content with your friends and family. If you're in or around the Jacksonville, North Carolina area, we will have honey available probably by the time this video posts in early June. So just get a hold of us and come grab yourself a jar. Thanks for watching everybody. All right, it's just after 12.30 and this is the begin of cleanup. So I'll give it about an hour, but I'm anticipating the bees definitely finding this location very soon. And that is a sight to see. All right, let's see what we ended up with. So here's the first bucket. 56.8. Here's the second bucket. 63.4 and here's the third bucket 58.8 all right grand total minus about six pounds for the buckets 173 pounds this weekend in early may absolutely fantastic